So now what I want to do is show you how to add detail to this um, at a level um, and in order to do that we need a tool. The tool is called the NVIDIA Normal Map Tool. Okay, You can go search NVIDIA Normal Map Tool and here is the developer and you can download the 32 or 64 bit version and install it on your system. It's just hitting next and OK just about to everything. Now, uh, what I would say is students really get lost when it comes down to what version they're using. Huge, lost, you would not believe. So go to computer and first off, find out if you have a 32 or 64 bit. Uh, it's very rare to have a 32 bit nowadays, but let's go to C drive. You're gonna find a 64 bit by looking at program files and 86. If you have two of these, it means you have a 64-bit system. This one is your 32-bit directory. This is your 64-bit directory. Therefore, you have a 64-bit directory. Then you find out what Photoshop you're using. Let's say you are randomly clicking on a Photoshop, um, like the one in your icon or down here. Let's find it. Here's the Master Collection 6, and I can go in here and say, well, I'm using this one. Well, this one's labeled 64-bit. So when you go to install the 64-bit, it's going to be using Adobe 64-bit, and you're right there. So that's where you're going to find the NVIDIA Normal Map Filter and that's it's a really uh, confusing thing when it comes down to it. Uh, what happens here is you, you might not see it being installed because it's in one of these DIL files. When you go to launch Photoshop for the very next time, you're going to have a new filter in here called NVIDIA Normal Map Filter. Okay. So that's the difference, 64-bit versus 32, and then just find out which Photoshop you're using, and it's a no-brainer thing after that. Well, you notice I made a copy of this, and it was this one before. So what happens is I want to use this copy to generate the normal map filter, or the normal map. So we can go to NVIDIA Tools, cho choose Normal Map Filter, and I can use Average RGB, and I want the filter type to be 4Sample. I have multiple layers, I'm going to use multiple layers. This one's turned off, so it's not going to affect the overall. Here's the thing, scale is too high here. A normal map should only lend to the details, not the height. The height is being calculated by the displacement. That's where I think the most um, uh, confusion spans is the fact that the generation of this should not represent height, only detail. So in this case, keep it low. Keep it like two, maybe three, because you're using a displacement map anyway. You'll know if you went too high because you'll have very, very bright blues and very distinguished pinks. Okay, in this case, I don't have that. It looks good. All right, so let's save that, and this, we'll call this NM, or normal map. Oops, maybe we'll put NM in front of here. Again, we don't want any layers. Layers slow the thing down. So hit save, hit none, and let's go back to Maya. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna go into uh, Hypershade. Drag in my new normal map. And add it to the sphere. Middle mouse button, click and drag it over. And use Bump Map. Okay, a bump map is much different than a normal map. It, in its tangent space rendering though. so. What happens is you can choose just regular bump or tangent space by clicking here. 
and you want tangent space normals. Bump does not have the capability of using the normals in its calculation. Tangent space does. A, a standard bump map is only uh, black, white, shades of gray. A normal map is blue and it has shades of um, or different hues of different color blues and pinks and greens and those tell Maya at what angle light comes in. Get into a little bit more but for right now just know that a lot of math is happening right here also. So here we have this. Now what I want to do is again lower down my approximation editor by going into approximation editor hitting the mesh, hit edit, and lowering that back down to 4. Rendering this out. And you can see now there's more detail here. So in this case you don't need much as far as the displacement is concerned you wouldn't have to go all the way up to 8 if you didn't want to because now you're strengthening it via normal map. So now your render time goes uh, a little bit faster. If you wanted to have more height issues or deeper details, you can go filter NVIDIA Tools Normal Map Filter, and then that's when you say, well, maybe a 3 is, could be used. You can save right over the top of it. Go back to Maya. Click on your Normal Map, right-click on it, say Reload Image, and then re-render it. Good. So the last thing you should worry about is color. Color strengthens all. Luckily we can undo to get the color and we can save that at. So now we have the color. We can add that to the default color. Just color. Again, straight, straightening out your network is a smart thing to do from time to time. So there we go. And let's render that out. You'll see an increase of um, how long it takes but you can see the color makes a huge difference we did not need to make a huge strong normal map and we did not need to make the displacement render uh, so far into subdivisions and the color added to everything and that increased our render time to huge render time was 0 0.06 seconds perfect all right so that's been a demonstration of how you can use like normal mapping, displacement mapping, and color all together to formulate a mesh. And now this mesh can be valued or looked at at a side angle. And it makes sense. Before, it would not. I'll just take this off the equation here. So let's go to this one, click on that. And what I wanted to do
show you something. But you might not be able to get to it here. In certain materials, you can shut off displacement by right-clicking on it. In this case, a Lambert does not allow you to do that. So here, um, what you could do is if you want to see what this looked like minus the displacement map, you can uncheck it here and then delete it, or here and delete it. And that way it doesn't calculate for that value. So now we just have normal map and color map, and you can see what major difference that has on it. Again, experiment. That's, that's the important thing to tell you. So look at what happens when you get rid of displacement. This might be good in game, but it would definitely not be good in CG where things are zooming around. Alright, so there we go. I hope you enjoyed, and let's go on to the next video.